Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back. We're here live in San Francisco for VMworld 2014. This is our fifth year. Excited to be here at theCUBE, extracting the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante and Itzik Rec, Rec CT, CTO and Principal SC of Extreme IO. How do you say your last name? And give us the Hebrew. Reich. Reich, okay. Reich. So, you know, it's, it's that East Coast uh, accent, I can never get that right, <laughs> but uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you for having um, me. You guys, know, you guys know the deal right now, obviously, uh, we are totally interested in Flash, the market is as well. Give us a quick update of what's going on with, with, with uh, Extreme IO in the field right now. Obviously, in directed availability, it's pretty hot product, I mean, the line around the corner to buy mm -hmm. it. It's like a bread line pretty much out in, you know, in starving, you know, converged infrastructure land. So what's going on now? Give us the update, what's happening? Right, that's a big question. I'll try to answer <laughs> it in, in a few <laughs> sections. So don't worry, don't worry about the bread lines. Right. The lines are like, yeah. <laughs> I so, love the analogy. So, <laughs> so as you know, the DA availability phase was in uh, 2013 and we went GA in November 24. And it was absolutely booming. I mean, we were still fairly small in terms of R&D and the SCs at the field. And the product has been going absolutely amazing in terms of different use cases. But back then, back in 2013, and even at the beginning of 2014, we called it phase one. Phase one was for use cases that were obvious for an old flash array, like performance. Let's say database. The customer has a database needs, they need to reduce the latency, they need to increase the performance, and they need to increase the bandwidth. They consolidated everything to extreme IO, right? That was the most obvious use case, phase one. Um, it also, from a low in a fruit perspective, that was one you know, isolated case that didn't just move their entire workload to extreme IO. Then in the beginning of 2013 came phase, what we call phase two. Phase two mean data services. F so for use cases like VDI, where you enjoy the data reduction technologies like deduplication, or for the database workload, things like Snapshot that we announced that are already GA, right? So you have a database and you now want to clone or snapshot the same database 250 times without uh, impacting the source volume performance. That's something that wasn't, uh, you weren't able to do it in the old days because that was always impact the source volume performance. Because it was spinning. Performance. It was spinning, <laughs> uh, the engine utilization was actually suffering very much as well, so it wasn't just the drives. And it was also about the cache. So the caching layer on traditional arrays was suffering big time. So you had to add more engine just to encompass for the, for the fact of adding more snapshots. So customers fixed this problem by, in traditional arrays by moving to clones. But clones, as you know, require a different spindle. Different spindle require different flow space, a lot of powering, a lot of cooling, a lot of money, right? For the box. So <laughs> the box, more box, more 70 <laughs> boxes more. Good for so business. Good for business, absolutely <laughs> good for business. But not sustainable. Not sustainable. <laughs> um, so that was phase two. And right now with the launch of version three, we are in what we call phase three. Phase three is going all in for extreme IO. I have a session on Wednesday, and I'm actually going to speak about a customer that was using extreme IO for phase one and phase two. It's a financial customer in EMEA that was using extreme IO for database consolidation, performance, and snapshots and now they decided to move their entire virtualized workload, everything, including everything, to Extreme I.O. Across two sites, with vplex in between, so that will make the entire solution active-active solution. And uh, you know, the road was very easy, they just wasn't sure about the TCO in terms of dollar per capacity, dollar per gigabyte, as opposed to dollar per performance. Right. So together with MyTrend, we developed a free tool that know to analysis your existing environment, whether it's physical or virtual, and it can tell you from a capacity point of view, taking into an effect our deduplication and thing provisioning saving and the compression savings that we just announced with version three, how much capacity it's going to require on Extreme IO. And you know what, just ignore performance and ease of management and you know, the requirement to not have different volumes with different trade structure. Just in terms of TCO, dollar per gigabyte, it was actually cheaper than a hybrid array. 
So that was a no-brainer question. From so we're them. there. We're there. We're we, already we're, there. We're we are absolutely already there. Flash is less expensive than traditional arrays. Correct. At, not at obviously certain segments of the market. Correct. Right? Not, not for every workload. I would say that some workloads are still not there. Obviously, archiving. Yeah. You're not going to use Extreme IO for data domain, but. For things like maybe Microsoft Exchange, that may not be the best solution. You will still require a hybrid array, but for pretty much everything else that is out there, it's already there. It's so already I there. ask all the folks out there the same question to the Flash guys. I mean, Flash is obviously great, we're big fans of it, but there's different levels of kind of storage needs. There's latency, real right. time, transactional, throughput and cost per terabyte, petabyte, gigabyte, whatever it costs, basically cost per, per device, uh, medium. So we've got to ask you the question, can you do all three? Can you serve all matches in a flash environment? Uh, and is there a notion of a, um, capacity flash versus performance flash? Because that seems to be a conversation we were having earlier this morning um, with folks in cloud is that there's different versions of flash. Certainly the economics are awesome, yep. very ridiculously cheap and, or inexpensive if you will. Um, so capacity and performance Flash. Is, is there a difference in you know, real time or transactional throughput cost per gigabyte? Yeah, that, that's a very good question actually because people in many cases, and I guess I should be one of them as well, <laughs> will preach an all flash array for every use case under the sun, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, for example, uh, you mentioned performance and bandwidth. I will also take it a step further and speak about data services. Maybe you just need performance and that's it. And for this, we have an absolutely good product called a VNXF. Right, it provides you the best TCO dollar per gigabyte per performance without the data services, without deduplication and compression, and you know what, that's absolutely good because not every use case needs or can benefit from those data services. For example, databases. Databases do not have deduplication associated with them. You can only have compression with database, but not uh, deduplication. Right, so if the customer just need a good flash that in terms of bandwidth and performance and very low latency could cope with the deal, that's a VNX F use case, right? Which is actually going to provide a better TCO than Extreme IO. On the other end, if you are looking for other cases, right, that require compression, require deduplication, and I would say probably the most important aspect is the scale out mechanism, which none of those hybrid arrays include, including our own hybrid arrays, then Extreme IO is the right solution for you. Because then you have building block that scale with both the capacity and the performance. By the way, that's another point that I'm going to speak quite a lot about on Wednesday. Some vendors out there tells you that you just need two engines and that's good enough because nobody needs one million IOPS. Well, they need to speak to my customers because I'm actually at the field all day long and they need one million IOPS. Even if they don't need them today, they will need them in the future. I'm always using the same analogy of an iPhone, right? What's was wrong with iPhone 3GS? I mean, what, what device are you using? <laughs> right? iPhone, of course. iPhone, but you're not using the iPhone 3GS, right? No. no. Why are you using iPhone 5 or iPhone 5S? Because the moment that Apple bring up a new device to the market, right. the developers immediately know to take advantage or to abuse the hardware and write and code new application that will take a, a benefit and take advantage of the new hardware. And the same thing applies for Extreme IO. So we were talking before and about snapshots. So up until now, customers were using maybe two or, two or two, three or two, four snapshots a day. But now they can use 20 or 200 snapshots a day, right? Because there is no penalty on the system itself. Well, my old iPhone was so much faster than my new iPhone because it wasn't <laughs> doing anything. There you right? go. So will we see the same thing in data centers? Exactly. When right? iPhone came out, <laughs> it was locked, only web-based application, but now everybody can write application into the iTunes web store. And that's exactly the thing with Extreme IO. That actually leads me to another point. We have a free plugin at EMC called VSI, Virtual Storage Integrator. It's a free plugin that sits on vCenter and gives you the capability to a, view information from your storage array, be provision volumes from your storage array. See, in the context of Extreme IO, it knows to take, let's say, a master image in the use case of VDI and clone it thousands of months of time. And we said, you know what? Why do we even want to mess with cloning? Although we support Xcopy and it's all done in metadata and memory and it's 10 times faster. Why should we settle for 10 times faster? We can use snapshots, which are immediate, right? And we can make it 1,000 times faster. So now customers are actually using this plugin that was originally meant to be used only for VDI, for snapshot-based VDI games, and they're actually snapshotting their server, virtual server workload, and taking advantage of the system itself. That's again, a thing that you know, a customer actually educate us about the potential of the array itself. I want to talk a little bit more about snapshots. So we had Avishak on before, and he was saying, 
you know, the whole architecture matters, you guys are, are yeah. big, big on that, and, and I'm, you know, I'm starting to believe you really believe that, and so <laughs> I'm, now looking with for, customers so I'm looking for, right, I'm, so I'm yeah. looking for more proof points, but so, he basically, we, we, he, he chose, I said, let's give me an example, and of course he chose the inline dedupe, which is, you guys have used a lot, and he said there are many, many others. Snapshots seem to be something that is interesting for customers, they're finding new ways to, to use snapshots, so I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit from two perspectives, one is, the architecture, because Avashek's point was, no, no, we've designed these, this feature set specifically for Flash. And I said, oh, your competitors could say the same yeah. thing. He goes, well, and let me give you an example. And they are saying the same thing. So we took inline DDP was one, and he said, many, many others. So I wonder if we could talk about snapshots. How are, are, is, is the implementation of snapshots different for the all Flash array for Extreme I.O. than it would have been for, let's say, legacy systems and maybe competitive systems, and how are customers using snapshots in new ways? Right. You've right. touched on though, but I yeah. really want to yeah, dig yeah, into yeah. this a so, so that's a great question. So first, let's talk about the architecture from an eye level. So let me tell you a secret, Dave. So for us, snapshots are just a volume. We don't have a concept of a snapshot. Yes, you can create a snapshot in the system, but it's just like any other volume. It will look like a camera, that's what makes it a snapshot. Yeah. For us, snapshot really means that it's the same data of the, as the original volumes, and because it's like this, because of our content addressable uh, storage architecture itself, when you create a snapshot, you create a volume, and you don't consume any capacity on the array itself, and you do not also consume CPU cycle from the array itself. That in itself is a huge value, because on traditional arrays, every snapshot are tightly attached to the volume of the parental volume itself. That kills the CPU utilization, the engine, right? And that's causing customers to either buy more engines or more controllers on the price to pay. Hybrid yeah, array. No, exactly. Free lunch, or just forget about it because they don't want to affect their parental source volume performance and go with clones, right? But clones require different spindles, different spindles require different, much more power, and which, of course, eventually will lead the customer to say, you know what, I'm only going to have maybe four clones a day. That's it, because that's what I can sustain without killing my source volume performance. What we are now seeing is that the question is not how many questions can we deliver, but rather how many uh, snapshots do you as a database uh, administrator, for example, want to have? So for example, we have a customer in, uh, in Scotland, a financial customer, that's now running uh, hundreds of snapshots almost every day because there is no penalty on the array itself. Uh, another use case will be actually virtualized environments. One of our uh, uh, companies that we actually allow to use is Amdox, as mm -hmm. a reference customer. You know Amdox, right? Sure, so they, yeah, of course. They deliver service for their billing Local company customers. for you, right? Local company <laughs> for me, correct. So their use case was, we are using vCloud Director from VMware. We are provisioning a vApp, which is a logical container that contains many VMs running the same uh, business logical entity, let's say SAP, for example. Right. And every change that we are uploading to the system needs to be represented as a new VAP, right? That will kill a, an hybrid array, or should I say a traditional array, because every one of these clones will consume more power from the CPUs, more capacity from the array itself. With us, they don't pay for it at all. So they are now actually doing a clone for every code revision, as opposed to a, a, a cumulative set of, let's say, a seven code changes every week. If that makes sense. So now they can actually roll back to a very specific point in time of this particular snapshot, right? Um, that's one thing. The other thing that is interesting for us in terms of the snapshot is that one of the traditional problems with traditional snapshot is that the hierarchy. If you create one or two snapshots, that's, that's okay, but if you create, let's say, 60 snapshots and you are querying data that reside on the parental volume, the, the traveling, the seeking time, even on flash, will take a lot of time, right? To find its way from s snapshot number 60 to the parental volume, which is number one. For us, we have a special mapping that reduced this uh, trip even further. So there is no seeking time. I mean, forget about the seeking time of the non-magnetic device, which is flash, but also the seeking times in terms of the software itself, right? So that's another benefit. And of you're keeping track of all these snapshots yep. in your system. Uh, you've got the, you have a catalog to do that? Or? We have a special table just for snapshots, yeah. Interesting. Yep, very. <laughs> so what's the disruptive technology coming in Flash? What's next? What's the big deal next? Um, it, 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 I, think, I think, again, it's a good question, but it really depends who you ask, right? For me personally, my background is not even storage. I'm a VMware admin. I've been a VMware admin for, I guess, uh, the past 12 years. So you see two tectonic shifts, right? Software defined, things like vSAN, Scale.io, Nutanix, the SimpliVity, like everything is condensed, hyperconverged. 
but those will fairly come with our data services and with distributed algorithm, right? And on the other end, you see customers who still want to buy a box, even if it's an old flash array. By the way, there are many good reasons to buy a box that are not necessarily technical, for example, responsibility. The box is not going away. I mean, right. Nutanix proved that. Correct. I'm just talking from a warranty yeah. point oh, of view, yeah. right? Okay. If I'm buying a server from one manufacturer, the software from another, and something breaks, who do I call to? But we do start to see um, maybe a collision into, into each other, so maybe a V sign that will be based around all flash array or things of that nature. And that's to me is the real future, maybe the, the combination between the two. That's, that's one angle to look at it. It's a great to have you on theCUBE, appreciate it. The impact of Flash on virtual servers, databases, virtual workloads, that's your session. Thanks for sharing theCUBE here. Thanks for having me. Get all the data, find out who's got what in the converged, hyper-converged, end user computing, journey to the private cloud, we're all here. This is theCUBE, getting the data, sharing that with you. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you very much. <laughs> Peace out.